Last year our vegetable garden turned out to be an utter disaster. We battled the weeds, we battled the grasses, and guess what? Mother Nature overpowered our efforts. Weeding in this garden is the bane of our existence. My darling's working away, weeding, fertilizing. We just absolutely couldn't keep up, so we just decided to completely abandon the garden and start fresh next year. Our gardening journey all started back in the early spring of 2021. We started by using a rear time tiller to till up all of the garden beds in the shapes that we wanted. And in the meantime, we got busy sowing our seeds indoors. And what we did is we used the Jiffy peat pellet system to make our life a little bit easier preparing the soil and to lessen the mess in and around our house. We decided we needed our garden to be completely fenced in to keep out critters and also to keep out Molly, our old English sheepdog. I also think having it fenced in just kind of makes it its own space. So, you know, when you go over to the garden, you say, hey, let's go to the garden. I built the whole thing out of pressure treated lumber and it's 104 feet by 57 feet so it's pretty massive and I also use the one by one hardware cloth as the fencing material. It was now the third week of May 2021 and my darling started transplanting all of the seed starts in order for us to produce our groceries that summer. We did manage to get some vegetables out of it but the garden was an utter disaster. There was so many weeds, so much grasses, all mixing in the beds. It seems like all of the garden tilling that I did was useless. We even tried letting the baby goslings in there to eat the grass, but even that didn't work. They couldn't keep up either. So the garden was a failure. I mean, who has time for that? We're trying to make this garden as efficient as possible to do as least amount of work. Just here with my buddy Dexter Morgan, trying to get some work done in the garden, and he is just being too sweet. <laughs> I love him. He's the best. Dexter Morgan is the best. <laughs> Look at him. He's not even struggling to get away. He's just hanging there. <laughs> it was now... 2022 and time to repair this garden time to completely renovate this garden and give it a complete makeover we decided to use a few different methods to fix this garden one of them was to install galvanized steel raised beds these galvanized raised beds that i bought they're 30 inches tall so they're quite deep you don't want to be filling the soil all the way from the bottom to the top that's gonna cost you a fortune in soil so I followed the Hugel culture method which is a method of adding rotting wood to the bottom of the bed and that encourages you know fungi it encourages insects it encourages worms it starts to compost and it really helps the soil above it and then you add your good soil to the top and that's what you're going to be planting in and this method saves you a ton of money in our case we have tons of wood just sitting around in the forest so it's easy enough to collect and it doesn't cost us anything another aspect that we change in this garden is the use of more raised beds now we used pressure treated lumber with only one layer with the ability to add on more layers in future years which will also help as we get older because we won't have to bend and squat to do our gardening we decided to use pressure treated lumber simply because of longevity and durability if you don't use treated lumber the wood is basically going to be rotten in a few years Plus, I like the aesthetic look of the wood in the garden. Very natural. Plus, modern day pressure treated lumber is not 
toxic the way it used to be. I went ahead to find a source for really good garden soil and I ordered two dump truck loads of triple mix which is a combination of peat, composted manure, and earth. If anybody ever wanted to know how much 23 yards of triple mix soil looks like, this is it. It actually sounds like a lot, 23 yards, but this is all it is. <laughs> all a good investment in order for us to be that much more self-sufficient. We had dug out three beds on where we're gonna plant the potatoes and then I just dumped fresh soil in these beds and of course I don't have maneuverability for the tractor inside the garden anymore because of the raised beds so I have to do a little bit of manual labor but it's all good for the heart isn't it folks a lot of fun in the garden I didn't want to put fresh soil just on top of the grass because the grass is going to grow right through and we're going to have the same challenge as last year. So what we did is we laid a layer of cardboard down first and then we put the raised bed on top of that. For some of the beds I was still able to get my farm tractor in there which makes moving the soil a lot easier. But for the most part, once you build and install these raised beds, the tractor is not going to be any use inside this garden. It can bring me the soil, but I still have to use the shovel. It was important to come up with a nice design as to where to put all the raised beds. And overall, I'm pleased and I think I did a pretty decent job. We have some nice walkways, we have a couple of wide walkways. It actually wasn't easy coming up with a layout, you know. I did it on paper just to try to plan it out and space out the walkways evenly just to make it aesthetically pleasing. All the regular walkways are four feet wide, which is the same as the geotech style. And for a beginner, it looks like a job well done. Fuzzy, what are you doing, buddy? You okay? Chunky! Maggie! Where's Dexter, guys? Where's Dexter? Dexter, I see ya. I see you in there. What are you doing, buddy? Come on over here. There you go. There you go. Come here, bud. Come here. Good boy. Good boy, Dexter. The next step in this garden transformation is to get working on the geotextile, also known as landscape fabric. But first, we have to mow all of the grass, get it down nice and short so that it's not going to interfere when we lay down the geotextile. And while I was working on that, my darling got busy planting some tomato plants that we bought and we also bought some peppers. So she got busy planting those, spacing them accordingly, and hopefully this new soil that we got is really good. The geotextile that I chose is a polypropylene woven style. It basically means it's like a black tarp and uh, it's very easy to use, easy to unroll. It doesn't disintegrate like the regular landscape fabric. It doesn't tear easily like the regular landscape fabric. So I'm happy that I invested in this stuff. Once I got the landscape fabric done, around our tunnel trellis. I got busy making the beds and filling them up with soil so that we could plant some climbing vegetables in there. It took a little bit of labor, but I got her done 
in no time at all. As I found time, I continued to lay down the geotextile, covering up all the grass and the weeds. And I just used landscape spikes to hold it down so the wind doesn't blow it away. The landscape fabric is four feet wide and the one that I bought comes in 250 foot rolls. So I think altogether I used six rolls and I'm not 100% completed. I'm only about 90% completed, but uh, it's good enough. I can continue the rest next year. We don't have it in the budget this year to install any kind of irrigation system, so we're going to have to just use the old hoses and sprinklers and water them the old-fashioned way. My darling has her herb garden bed growing in nicely. We got some cucumber and long beans sewed, ready to climb up the tunnel trellis. And everything's coming together. A lot of the flowers are in bloom, a lot of these plants are growing nicely, and we'll see how this year's harvest is going to be by the end of the summer. <laughs> Look at these two dogs. Aren't they amazing? Olive, come here. <laughs> Molly, you staying in the shade? <laughs> she don't want to come out in the sun. What do you think guys? <laughs> I don't even know. So we got six of these galvanized beds. One, two, three, four, and then five, six right here in front of the goose caboose. <laughs> now these, I planted okra in one of them and the other one has some mescaline lettuce mix. So hopefully we can get some salad soon. These ones right here, I got some carrots and some spinach. And there's some uh, romaine lettuce in one of them. The far one there has a bunch of Ferrari variety green beans because we really like the green beans. Okay, that's 12 that are eight feet long. And then I have one, two, three, four, five. Then I have five that's 16 feet long. That's not too shabby. That's a lot, a lot of space, a lot of space for us to do a lot of planting. Over here, our potatoes are doing well. Remember I said we have three patches of potatoes. Look, it's doing well. It's doing really well. We should get a lot of potatoes from them. Oh, I hear one of the cats. Dexter, is that you? <laughs> I hear one of the cats. Oh my God, look who's coming. Look who's coming. Don't you walk on my garden. You stay in the path, okay? There's Dexter. Let's go say hi to Dexter. There you go, buddy. There you go, buddy. We got a bunch of onions here. We got a bunch of peppers, all different kinds of peppers. So we got these cantaloupes here and they're not really doing that great. I don't think we're going to get any cantaloupes out of it. <laughs> Olive's playing with chunk. <laughs> they're not even like this big. So there's no way, it's already July, there's no way we're going to be getting any fruits out of it. I don't know what happened. We got a bunch of carrots that are popping up here. You can see the little tiny sprouts. I don't know what else we're gonna get this year. We're not gonna be planting anything. I think I'm pretty much finished building whatever beds I'm gonna build. That's uh, spent enough money already. <laughs> we tried to plant, you know, but we'll have to see how the rest of the season goes. As you can see, guys, we have all this propylene geotextile or landscape fabric, 
and I just want to do away with whatever grass and weeds are in here. Eventually we'll be covering all of this walk areas, aisles, what have you, but we need wood chips and it's going to take a long time to get enough wood chips to cover all of this space and I like making the wood chips myself. We have lots of wood, I have a tractor, I have a wood chipper, I just need time to do it. I do like the way the raised beds look aesthetically, you know, when you come in it really looks like a garden, it's easy to make it organized. Each bed could be a specific plant and it makes it a lot easier to track what you're doing. Drop it in the comments what you think about this transformation. I'm about, I don't know, 90% completed. So I'm just, I'm cutting it off for this year. I'm not doing any more. The rest is gonna happen next spring. <laughs> Hopefully next year we won't have to deal with the weeds and the grass. Cause honestly, who has time for that? Really, who has time for that? You know, we're not full-time farmers. It's like, you know, you, you only have a limited number of hours in a day and <laughs> It was my, our mistake last year. We really screwed up the, our plan. We thought the tilling would work and keep the grasses and the weeds at bay. It doesn't. If anybody out there is thinking that'll work, it doesn't work. So we went with the raised beds. We went with brand new triple mix soil and we're gonna be continuing to amend the soil as we go. If you don't know, we got rabbits. So I'm gonna be building a rabbit hat very soon, but we got a lot of rabbit poop from these rabbits that we're gonna be using to add manure to these garden beds. Hope you guys had a lot of fun hanging out with me in the garden today. Hopefully it inspires somebody to get out there and start growing some of your own stuff. You can start small. It doesn't have to be a big, huge, massive disaster garden like ours, but yeah, start. Especially with the cost of inflation these days. You know, you want a head of lettuce, it's like $8. You want a very tiny watermelon, it's $10. It's absolutely unbelievable how much we have to pay for our food. We gotta start growing our own food, guys. Self-reliance is the way to go. And if you're interested in watching me building this fence, I'm gonna put a link for it down below and you'll be able to keep on watching how I set up this whole garden last year. I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with the way it turned out. I hope you're impressed with the video. Don't forget to pound that like for me if you did like the video. Thanks for watching. You guys take care, okay?